The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill. A breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Jeremy Schatt. You may know me from ESPN's Outside the Lines and Sports Center. What you probably don't know is that I've suffered from Crohn's disease for almost 20 years. The Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America's Take Steps, Be Heard walk program is the largest national walk program dedicated to raising funds and awareness to combat Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. To learn more about how you can help and to find a walk site near you, please visit www.cctakesteps.org. Think fast. In the short time it takes to listen to this message, a small flame can turn into a big fire. Several minutes more and thick, poisonous smoke may have filled your lungs and reduced your ability to respond. Give it five, and your entire home may be filled with flames. Keep breathing. We've got you. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and practice an escape plan for you and your loved ones. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov, because fire is everyone's fight. Have you mixed your pain meds, your sleep meds, your allergy meds? Call the Poison Helpline. Has your child eaten a tube of toothpaste, a chip of paint, a wild mushroom? Call the Poison Helpline. Have you been bitten by a spider, a snake, an insect? Call the Poison Helpline. Poisonings can happen at the home, on the job, or in the great outdoors. Call the Poison Helpline first for fast, free advice from medical professionals. Call 1-800-222-1222 anytime, anywhere. 1-800-222-1222. Save the number, save a life. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today, 
or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Hi, I'm Hillary Duff. As a mom, I'm proud to support the March of Dimes in helping more women have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. That's why I walk in March for Babies. The money we raise funds research and local programs that help babies overcome the challenges of premature birth and birth defects. Sign up today at marchforbabies.org. Together, we can help make healthier babies possible for thousands of families. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. to you one and all here it is a monday morning i am your lovable host elrod coming to you live from the bunker eye studio somewhere within the great granite state of new hampshire where the state motto is live free or die it is not big government or bust here it is on monday february 27 in the year of our lord 2017 as we get ready to kick off the week got a new feature by the way uh as an ongoing pursuit of perfection here at the Rod Echo Show. Um, over the weekend, we did some upgrades and some changes to the ever-lovable website, rodeckles.net. Now, it was necessary to do these kinds of changes. Now, for some people, they'll think that the site is a little bit cleaner. Uh, it's a little bit faster to na- navigate. And that's a good thing. Now, you may you may find that some of your uh, favorite places that you go to there on RodEccles.net have been moved in the menu. And again, this is necessary as we continue to prep and uh, design the new website, which is coming shortly. Uh, it is going to be totally different from what you are looking at now. Rodeckles, I mean, right right now, it's a good site. I'm not gonna. It's, I'm gonna pat myself on the back. It's a good site, but the new one that is coming, that is being worked on as we speak, it is. I'm gonna say is gonna blow your mind because it is not going to. Now, frankly, if you look at RodEckles.net, it looks pretty much like almost every other talk show or columnist or uh, you know talking head site out there. Well, what we're doing is we're breaking that pattern. Uh, in order to make the site more interesting, more navigable, uh, and so we can fit more information, and so it's it's speedier on our end because right now it's it is kind of cumbersome to do um, to uh, maintain this site on a daily basis. So it is it's, things are slowing down. Uh, it is also if you are mobile, uh, it will look fantastic on your mobile device. Oh, yeah, we're testing it now, I mean, to, you know, as we go along, and it is going to look fantastic. I'm just, if, because right now, I mean, we've we've done some tweaks to the current site, because it, it hasn't looked its best on mobile, and we know that a lot of people are looking, you know, they're listening to the show, and they're reading the show on the go, on, the, on, their, on their tablet or in their phone, um, and the, this current site, when it was first launched, looked terrible. On a mobile phone, 
and it did. It looked terrible on a mobile phone. I mean, it looked okay on a on a tablet, and it looked great on your on your computer screen, you know, your laptop or your desktop. But for a mobile phone, it looked terrible. It looks a lot better on a on a mobile phone now. But wait until the new one comes out in the uh, in the second quarter of this year. It's taking some time to build, uh, but it is going to be just letting you know it's going to be fantastic. Going to be fantastic. Uh, Actually, uh, we uh, have some other things that we're doing. Um, this week, later this week, going to run a little experiment. Uh, we're going to attempt to do uh, the first half hour of the program as a Facebook Live event. Yeah, we're just testing it out. Just uh, we're we're not gonna it's not gonna be anything fancy. Uh, it's not gonna be you know all that beautiful. It's probably not even gonna. Um, we'll just probably just tag into one of the um, uh, one of the uh, uh, cameras on one of the computers. We won't be using an external camera, so you know the quality might not be the greatest. Uh, this is just an experiment. Uh, we're doing this for a reason, as we set up for bunches of other stuff that's, that's coming. Yes, I may be being talked into uh, doing a video channel. I said I would never do that, but um, people around me who are discussing these things with me are, are making a very, very strong case for such a thing. And um, uh, now, now I, I'm going to tell you. Uh, at this particular juncture, I mean, this having refitting, re retrofitting a studio like for for full time video is expensive. So, I'm you know I, I I may have to take parts of this and and use it as a subscription model. Uh, still in still way that if we did video here full time, it would not happen before the fall. So still got a long time to try to figure that out. Uh, but it, it not. I see why a lot of these, a lot of the other talking heads and such, and, and others, go on a subscription model um, for at least part of their site because it gets pretty expensive. You know, as, as I'm looking at the cost of some of it, it gets pretty damn expensive. Um, but you know, maybe maybe we will have you know, uh, some of our new sponsors and new sponsors that we bring on at that time too. Um, maybe they'll be able to uh, pick up. Pick up the cost of that stuff because oof, I'm looking at the pricing of some of that stuff and I'm telling these people, what is, you know, I'm no. <laughs> some of that cost is definitely no. But um, uh, so that that is what we're, we're I don't know the day yet, but sometime later this week we will do a uh, an experiment on a Facebook. I'm not sure I like Facebook Live, but you know, it's it's a test. That's going to help us figure out some other things. Um, so we'll, because look, I mean, I could, I don't have to figure this out on my own, I guess. I mean, I could spend thousands, literally thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on hiring outside companies to already know all this stuff to, to figure it out. But I, if, hey, I don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to waste on these people. And I'm not even sure if I want to go this direction in the first place. So the best way to do to to find out a little bit about it is just to run your own tests. It's it helps for me to know anyway how this crap works instead of having somebody else tell. Well, this is how it works, and then I find out later that's not how it really works. But I've had that happen before. In any case, welcome to Monday. The call in number is six zero three eight three five three two two six. If you were watching the Oscars last night, um. I, I don't um, no, I don't watch the Oscars, and I didn't even tune in at least five minutes last night simply because I knew it was going to be. Now you can go back to last week. I told you that when um when Jimmy Kimmel said that he was afraid to do it, he was even getting a migraine from doing it. He didn't want to do it. His gut was telling him not to do it. And I said, J uh, you know, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, you should not do it because it's going to be a self-fulfilling disaster. Now, I haven't heard people slam on Jimmy Kimmel, so evidently he was okay. 
However, <laughs> according to everybody out there, the Oscars last night was an unmitigated disaster. Did I call it or did I call it? Did I not tell Jimmy Kimmel to stay far away, to you know listen to his gut and go away? Unless he absolutely had to do it, he shouldn't have done it. And I, I bet you he's going to listen to his gut for, for, uh, more often now. Because I don't know how he, ha- how he handled all this stuff. Because, again, I didn't watch. But there were a number of firsts. I, I mean, it, they announced the wrong winners. I, I, can you imagine? Now, these people are so worried about being politically correct. Because they did. Who was the? There was an Iranian thing. I'm reading this morning, thinking, um, yeah, we, we, we've got we've got the, a foreign movie made by an Iranian producer, director, or whatever. And they were chastising and lamb blasting President Donald Trump for wanting to limit or ban travel from Iran and Iranians. Hello, you jackasses in Hollywood. Jimmy Carter banned Iranian travel to and from Iran, and anyone from Iran could not get into this country. And as a matter of fact, a lot of Iranians that were in this country, even with green cards, got kicked out. And yet Trump is saying, well, you know, hey, let, let's do some some super vetting. If you already have a green card, then, okay, you know, evidently the, the, the new executive order is saying that's, that's going to be fine. But the new Iranian, you know, if you're from Iran, by the way, who's who's threatened, who's threatening all the time to take on the U.S. military, you know, going to burn your burn your your houses down. We're going to, you know, kill all you Americans and death to America, death to America. And so, hey, let's say, you know, you want to chant death to America so you don't get to come to America to try to fulfill your prophecy of death to America. And you've got some Americans out in Hollywood because it was Trump who said it, who want to stand up and say, oh, he's a fascist. Trump's a fascist. We can't have this. This is so bigoted. Bullshit. It's bigoted. We did it back in 1979. President, then President Jimmy Carter banned Iranians and he even deported many who are already here legally. I I told you folks the Oscars was going to, if you watched the Oscars, shame on you. Because I told you it was going to be an unmitigated disaster. And evidently it was, because everybody's talking about the mistakes, uh, they're talking about the uh, uh, mis-announcing the wrong the wrong film getting the best Oscar for film the film award, whatever it is. Um, you had um, a number of different issues. I don't know what are produ- uh, production issues. You, you you had the guy for I because the the, the winner from who was from Iran, I suppose. Um, he gives he gave an a, a rousing ovation to boycotting Iranian filmmaker who belittles inhuman, inhumane U.S. So they give him a rousing ovation. But he was boycotting the U.S. Well, I don't think he was boycotting. I don't think he could get in anyway. I, 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 these people were actually, uh, at the Oscars, they were actually cheering, literally, their own destruction. They were literally cheering for their own premature deaths. I am not kidding. I'm, I'm re- These people are so stupid and so... No, no, look, this is not ignorance, folks. This is not... Ig- this is plain, utter, sheer stupidity based on blind partisan, partisan hatred and intolerance. That's all it is. Because this is the same country when a different president by the name of Jimmy Carter did the exact, he did worse than what Trump is proposing. Or what Trump did. Jimmy Carter kicked P. 
people out that were here legally. Trump isn't doing that. He hasn't proposed that. The difference is, is because you back then you didn't have a bunch of people who were so who were so stupid, who were so inane, who were so hate filled, who were so childish that they actually did at one point in this country in Hollywood did for the most part believe in country first. These jackasses in Hollywood, they don't even give a damn about the country. All they want to do is rape it and pillage it for every dime they can possibly steal from you. And in return, they give you crap that they call movies and entertainment. It's a bunch of BS. It's a bunch of crapola. It's a bunch of garbage. And no wonder the movie industry is in trouble. And no wonder it's selling off to China because they can't make a damn good movie with a damn decent actor. Because these are all phony baloney, plastic banana, good time, rock and roll idiots who are cheering for their own destruction and they're putting it on display worldwide and think that they're so damn smart. I mean, come on. You're going to give an Oscar nod to a person from a country that hates the USA. Who was, whose citizenry was banned here, not, not just by Trump, but by a few different presidents over the past 50 years. Not just, so none of you out in Hollywood ever complained when Jimmy Carter did it. None of you complained when George Herbert Walker Bush did it. None of you complained when George W. Bush did it, when Clinton did it, or when Obama did it. You're only going to complain now that Donald J. Trump does it. I mean, this is, this is you cannot be more partisan in, on display with your stupidity than these people. I'm, I am so done with Hollywood now. I mean, I told you... I, so I, I know I don't have a direct number for Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel. I, if I did, I would have told him to walk. I, I would have told him to turn around, not walk away, but run from the Oscars. Now, I don't know how he's going to get tagged with this, but you can bet he is not. He's not going to come out of this unscathed. And it's not going to be, it's not going to do good for his, or do his career any good. He's already in the, in what, last place in the, in the, in the late night game. And maybe his agent thought this would help him bring him up. The Oscars will never help a lagging career. It'll only make it harder for you. Because these people are full of jackasses. Or so They can't even count. Maybe it's all that new math. You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on The Rod Echo Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay 15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 Plus 2 Equals Perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must-read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement. 
But now, there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. Zero three eight three five three two two six. That is the number to call should you wish to join me here live here on the Rod Eccles Show. Now, um, one of the reasons that um, that we're making changes to the current website it, it, in order to line it up more better with the new site is for migration purposes. Every, everything that is on the current site now, and even as we continue to add information and stuff to the current site, well, it's going to have to be migrated over to the brand new site. Now, the problem is, is that if you don't have, I, I, from what I'm learning, if you can't line things up, it takes longer for the migration. And, um, now, now I learned this from past experience. If you don't, if you don't do things in a certain way, when you migrate a site from one, one format to another, things get lost. Uh, but if you, uh, you know, t- if you, Ba- at layman's terms, if you line things up, basically, uh, put them in the same columns, if you were, as it were, uh, it becomes easier. Um, it becomes easier to migrate. So, and it doesn't take as long because it can, you know, if you got a if you got a fairly large site, and it can take, you know, it could take hours, days, sometimes to migrate stuff over it's it's not as fast you would think it would just be like instantaneous because it would just you know flip over but no it, it actually like has to flow into i don't know how that kind of garbageola really works i mean in theory i suppose uh but the actual the, the, to get a visual of it it's it's a little bit more di- difficult to explain um from a visual standpoint but it, it can take some time but if you do things ahead of time to uh, to line things up, as it were, um, then it'll take less less time and it'll be more accurate. And you won't lose as much data. Now, hopefully, we won't lose any data. But um, when the migration takes place, and we'll do it, you know, we'll do it over the weekend, late at night, and then just one Friday, it'll be the uh, it'll be the old site, and then and on that Monday. You'll wake up and go to it to tune in the program, and it'll be something that'll totally blow your mind away. We'll let you know when that happens. But um, if you've never visited the Rod Eccles um, website, you should go over there. I mean, it looks you get, you get some good information there. We're, we're adding some aspects to it. Um, it's this is a never-ending process of trying to improve this program. So, one, to entertain and inform. And the main, for, for all you new listeners, the main focus of this program is to inform in an entertaining manner. So, by that, you actually remember more, you pay attention more, you understand more. And that's all that counts, is for you to be informed that you understand. That's all that counts. Uh, yeah, we're also, I know somebody else asked over the weekend, what about my own app? Well, you know, Spreaker has it, has an app that you can utilize to get, to get the show, get this program. 
Um, we're looking into developing our own app, but that's something else that takes time and money. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved. And four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. Woo! There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. 
That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. Hello, America. It's me, your history. I remember a time when we thumbed our nose in a king's face and sent him packing. And when fascists and emperors talked a little bit too loud, we showed up, tore their cities to the ground, and then rebuilt them just to prove we could. We put men on the moon, we won a cold war, and we elected fearless leaders who led fearless people. What the hell happened to you, America? Back in my day, we didn't elect a big-eared community organizer. We punched him in the kidney. Maybe it's time you came home, America. Home where you belong. Six zero three eight three five three two two six. Here it is on a Monday morning. Uh, you can utilize that number all week long during the program to call yours truly. A uh, couple of things I wanted to cover this morning. Uh, the other day, well, over the weekend, I was listening to another uh, program. I know I do that every once in a while. I'll, I'll listen to other people, and a young man by the name of. Caden Cowger. Now, I had been mispronouncing his name for for years. Caden uh, Cowger. He started out, uh, now he's only 18, 19 years old now. And he is, he is a Christian conservative. Now, I, br- I say it that way simply because he's quickly becoming, as he, as you know, he grows into adulthood and manhood. He's quickly becoming one of those annoying Christian conservatives. I'm, look, look I, I, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. But I do not believe in every other word coming out of your mouth that should be Lord or Bible or Christian or Christian speak. Uh, that's not what... I, I don't see that in the Bible anywhere. Old Testament or New Testament. I don't see that. I don't see God or Jesus telling everybody that every other sentence should be to should be to glorify the Lord. That is the most ridiculous, nonsensical thing I've ever heard. You know, yeah, you you play hockey to glorify the Lord. Th- that means nothing. It really does. Now, I'm not saying that you put God in the shelf and you only and you only bring him down during holidays or even for some people just on a Sunday or when, you know, Sunday morning or Wednesday night. No, 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 no. You should be living your, your daily life as a, as a true full fledged Christian, but it does not mean that you walk around wearing God on your sleeve. Remember Christ, you know, I I love these people who, 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 who want to pray at the drop of a hat, pray out loud. Remember Christ said you pray in private, you pray silently. That, that's in the Bible, by the way. So, I bring that up because he was, he was lambasting and lambasting Milo Yanovich, or uh, y- Yanopolic, uh, Polis. How the hell do you pronounce that poor guy's name? I, he's, a, he's a Greek via... Via England, right? Because he's a he's actually a Brit, but that's you know it's like George. You know, people don't know George Michael's Greek too, or was Greek of Greek heritage. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, it, I, Michael was not his real last name, by the way, uh, George Michael. But he he was using a lot of Christian speak in order to take down Milo. And he was accusing Milo of being a, a, a fake conservative. Now, the reason why Milo was a fake conservative is because Milo is uh, an admitted, open homosexual. And that's not allowable. I, I, I guess in his worldview, it's not allowable. And I look, you know, I understand that there are a number of things in the Bible that, that, have, that, that are discussed that you know basically in the old testament there we're told 
that these are against laws. You know, some of these laws are called Levitical laws, and this is what most people base things upon. They seem to forget the Ten Commandments. But the, Le- the Levitical laws, oh, those get, those get uh, elevated to a, stat- a stature that God never intended. And they use those Le- Levitical laws in order to sustain certain kinds of bigotry. If you will. Now, yeah, I'm going to point out bigotry when I when I see it and I hear it. They they take these Levitical laws as meaning that they're more important than the Ten Commandments. But then then they'll they'll totally ignore other. Now, I'm going to say something about Christians here. I'm going to say something about Christians. Now, now, this isn't every Christian, but all the all the real pompous ones, like I believe Caden Cowger is becoming one. Now, if you, you cannot pick and choose the way you interpret the Bible, you, you're not supposed to pick and choose. Well, let me ask you, why do you eat ham? Why is your diet basically shit? Why aren't you keeping keeping hold of the proper rest day? I know some people will say, well, you know, we don't, uh, you're not supposed to work. The only thing you're supposed to do on a, why aren't you fasting on Sunday? The only thing you're supposed to do on Sunday is rescue an animal or a human being if they are in trouble, if their life is in danger. Otherwise, you're not even, you're not, you're not supposed to lift a finger. Your day is supposed to be spent all day in prayer, fasting. Now, this is biblical. It's in the Bible, Levitical laws. You don't lift a finger on the rest. It's total rest. How many of you do that? How many of you watch your diet? God gave specific instructions about what to eat and what not to eat. Now, this is not just kosher. This is just, uh, some of it actually has been proven to be scientifically accurate, uh, to be better, to, to biblical, parts of the biblical diet are one of the healthiest diets ever devised. Well, of course it would be because it was created by God, but how many of you are following it? So do not preach to me or anybody else and come at me about what Milo is or is not in his own brain. That's between him and God. If you don't like the fact that he's, that he, look, you can be a homosexual. You can be a straight heterosexual. But remember, we have some people that take a vow of celibacy or abstinence and they don't participate in their carnal desires. uh, Desires. And I know that there are some people that actually, well, I believe for for most people who are in alternative lifestyles, it is a choice. It's not how they were born. With that, I I will agree. There is a choice that is there. You always have a choice. But when you have people that agree with you on the macro, and Milo would agree on the macro, about how this country was was founded and how it was how it should be um, run today and to discount him and dispatch him because maybe you know there there's a new movie out there that uh, James Franco uh, somebody sent me a video clip of this now, I'd never heard of it because I, I didn't even know who this who it, who it's about I didn't even know who he was uh, James Franco and Christian Slater and uh, Alicia Silverstone and Molly Ringwald evidently is in this movie now, okay um, but it, it is <laughs> it's about the rise of this gay porn star and I guess he's turned legit straight. TV star, movie star, I don't know. Um, and, and I'm, uh, what was it? Uh, King Cobra is the name of it. And they sent me this clip, and they said, "Well, what do you think of this, Rod?" Oh, yeah, I've never heard of it. I said, "Well, you should watch the clip." Now, evidently, this is a 
This is a biopic of a young man by the name of, what's his name? I got it right here. Yeah, Brent Corrigan. Anybody ever heard of him before? I didn't, so I did a little Google search. I got to tell you, I was a little surprised. I was a little taken aback by it. Not going to lie. I mean, things don't usually surprise. Well, I'm not surprised that this is, you know, what's happening. But the, the, the kid got into this thing on purpose by fooling a bunch of people that he was older, even going to the point of giving him or giving people fake IDs at the age of 17. And then turning on some of these people and trying to get them into trouble. Well, evidently, uh, as, as I'm looking at, at this um, um, information on this Brent, Cor uh, real name, Sean something. Um, I'm, I'm looking at, at, at this so-called biography of this kid starting at 17 by lying to people. I, you know, I can see why some people would be a little upset. But but at the same time, this Brent kid is no different being homosexual as as are a lot of straight or heterosexuals. They have done the same. I mean, we've had numerous biopics and 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 fake opics. You know, the fake opics is, are pretend pretend to be about somebody real, but they're really not. Uh, about the porn industry, the straight porn industry. And yet I've never really, you know, I've never really heard of any of the straight porn people being so torn apart because of their straight and so, yeah, if you're in college, you've probably seen, well, look, I, you know, I was, I went to college. I never got into a lot of that kind of stuff, but man, some of the stuff that they would show, and portray, I mean, even down to cartoons, it would blow your mind. So we've got a lot of people doing a lot of things by choice. But that doesn't prevent them from coming around and doing the right things for the right reason at the right time. The problem is, is that you've got these, these pompous Bible bashing Christians or Bible, you know, well, they're not bashing the Bible. They're, they're bashing people over the head with the Bible that run around and, and, they, and they find fault in just about everyone. They find, and, and, and thus, once they find fault in that person, they have to discount everything that that person does or says until they fix that fault. And what I got out of Caden was that he was going to never cease bashing Milo simply because Milo is a, an admitted homosexual. And until Milo decides to step out of the evil idolatry of homosexuality, we should not be listening to a word he has to say. I'm thinking, are you kidding me? And so the pompous are supposed to inherit the earth? Oh, no, that's not the way it goes. It says the meek shall inherit the earth. Not the weak and not the pompous, but the meek. And it just drives me insane that you've got, got these people who are nothing but holy rollers. And, it's, and if, you, if you examine their life, it just comes about that they're nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. How many of these televangelists have been brought down by their own doing? Not, not being set up or trapped into doing anything, just by their own doing. I mean, what, uh, 80s was big with this stuff, 80s and 90s. Uh, Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, you had Jimmy Swaggart, and a whole bunch of others. You even, uh, you know, people talking about uh, having wonderful marriages, and and and, th and then then they get divorced. Uh, who is it? Um, Chuck Swindoll. Yeah, you know, look at some of the names. By the way, it's just ironic. Swindoll. What is that? Swindle, right? Yeah. What do you do? What swindle mean? 
Mm -hmm. Uh, And you have people like, uh, well, you you got all of a sudden people out there preaching the the gospel of uh, the prosperity gospel, the, you know, like uh, Joel Osteen. And then you and prosperity gospel with uh, Creflo Dollar. Didn't he get into some huge trouble not too long ago? And again, what what preacher names himself Dollar? Big problem right there. And then of course you know you got those wonderful uh, uh, televangelists like Ron Parsley, uh, Rod Parsley. You know I actually watched this guy once. I watched this guy preach on TV. Well, they call it preaching. He was on the air for about 25 minutes. No joke. I sat there and watched him telling everybody that he was going to deliver the biggest, most powerful, God-leaning message ever, literally, for 20 minutes. He kept saying, I'm going to give you this word, but before I give you that word, you got to understand it's this and this and this, and I'm just going to come at you with this beautiful word that you're never going to forget, and I'm going to teach you this and teach you that. You know how, how you're supposed to tell people what you're going to tell them, and then you tell them, tell them what you're going to tell them, and then you tell them what you just told them? Well, this guy just decided that he was going to have a 20-minute dissertation of what he was going to tell us. And then at five minutes of what he was going to tell us, I'm still trying to think, you know, remember whether or not he actually told us. Because then the last five, it seemed like the last five minutes, he said, well, that's the message I have for you. Now, if you believe in this message, you just go to that phone and you pick it up and you write that check and you send it in and you're, you call us and you give us your credit card number. I'm thinking, are you kidding me? But these are supposed to be the quote unquote True Christians. And yet, these are the people that are going to determine whether or not Milo gets into heaven. Now, I'm not saying that you don't, as a Christian, you don't have the God-given right to judge a sin. You can point it out. You know, your, your, your neighbor commits a sin. You can point it out. But understand, you're not perfect either. And there's sin in you. And you better straighten out yours. You can point out somebody else's, but you cannot judge them on it in the way that God judges. Now, this isn't meant to be a sermon. But I got to tell you, li- listening to these people all the time, no wonder so many so many people get turned off by Christianity. Anybody, anybody, anybody been paying attention to the Catholic Pope of late? Yeah, my point exactly. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes & Noble and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, 
why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0 Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays. You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. Six zero three eight three five three two two six. Thank you, CS, for uh, phonetically spelling and pronouncing how you pronounce Milo Yanopoulos. Now, I thought I had it right before, but then I've heard other people pronounce it other ways. So I thought, well, maybe I don't know what I'm doing after all. Um, but but you know, I, I know that there are people out there that that pay attention and, and they and they watch. And they support a lot of these televangelists and and these other types of so-called you know Christian leaders. I get it, and, and I'm not I'm not chastising anybody who does that. I and mean, if, if it's what you want to spend your money on, you're you're free to do so. But don't turn around and start condemning other people based on certain aspects. That that you elevate higher than the Ten Commandments. Now, now I, I'm going to be. Just, look, there's nothing in the Ten Commandments that tell that 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 is anti-homosexual. That's in the book, the book of Leviticus. That's when that comes into play. It isn't. The, it isn't. It isn't the Ten Commandments. It's not. It's not there. But yet, these same people who want to go ahead and, and condemn people for being homosexual. They, they they commit they commit adultery and get divorced. Well, God thought that was really very important that He put it in the Ten Commandments. That's what I'm talking about about these holier than thou Bible thumping Bible bashing people. I ju- I I'm I'm not perfect, but don't come across to me as 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 when you're condemning somebody else that you're the you're the end all be all of perfection. And then, then you just decide to pick and choose. Now, according to the Bible in the New Testament, in order for you to be a, a leader or a preacher or a priest or a teacher, and you can call them priest, father, reverend, what have you, and lead a congregation, you have to be the husband of one woman with a solid family. The Apostle Paul said that. Now, when Chuck, was it Chuck Swindoll? I think it was Chuck Swindoll. When he got divorced, he should have stepped down. How how are you going to counsel somebody on having a strong family and and a strong marriage when you're sitting as a divorcee yourself? When you're sitting at the head of of a shattered family? You know, I'm a, I might have the credentials of being a reverend, but I could never lead a church. I'm divorced. Plain and simple. So can we stop acting like we're holier than thou, Caden? America is America because it is so American. The children... They are the future of children, and she loves the children. Diversity is diverse when diversity is diversified. For a future you can see, for a future that brings with it all the hopes of tomorrow, 
By doing everything we did yesterday, we need a leader. We need a champion. We need her. Not for me. It's enough now. Give me it. It's mine. I want it. Just give me it. I want it now. Stop asking questions and just give it to her already. Or you're a sexist racist. Paid for by criminals and idiots for Hillary Clinton. Because let's face it, you have to be one or the other to vote for this complete monster. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. Think fast. In the short time it takes to listen to this message, a small flame can turn into a big fire. Several minutes more and thick, poisonous smoke may have filled your lungs and reduced your ability to respond. Give it five, and your entire home may be filled with flames. Keep breathing. We've got you. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and always stay in the kitchen when cooking at high temperatures. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov, because fire is everyone's fight. Have you mixed your pain meds, your sleep meds, your allergy meds? Call the Poison Helpline. Has your child eaten a tube of toothpaste, a chip of paint, a wild mushroom? Call the Poison Helpline. Have you been bitten by a spider, a snake, an insect? Call the Poison Helpline. Poisonings can happen at the home, on the job, or in the great outdoors. Call the Poison Helpline first for fast, free advice from medical professionals. Call 1-800-222-1222 anytime, anywhere. 1-800-222-1222. Save the number, save a life. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Premature birth is the number one killer of babies. Those who survive often face birth defects and complications that affect them for life. For hundreds of thousands of families in the United States, this is the hardest thing they will ever have to face. And it's even harder on the baby. March of Dimes is providing education and support to families and funding life-saving research to give every baby a fighting chance. You can help. Do something today. Give them tomorrow at marchadimes.org slash tomorrow. It's pretty amazing when you consider that seven years ago, we didn't have the treatments we have now. We cure 80% of children with cancer. Go back 50 years, we were curing 20 to 30%. This is the miracle story of modern medicine. We understand what makes this cancer tick. And of course, without donors from around the world, this just couldn't happen. There's one thing we're focused on, and that's beating this thing. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding Cures, Saving Children. Learn more at stjude.org. Not on my watch, our military service members say, as they volunteer to serve, as they move out, stand firm, and take fire. So not on our watch, we say, to the severely ill or injured veterans who can't get the care they deserve to live full and independent lives, even when there's no government funding or a nursing home seems like the only option. We won't leave one warrior behind. Not on our watch. Join us at findwwp.org. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance, in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today, 
or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. America's wounded warriors are coming home. After serving on foreign shores, these brave men and women are returning to their families and communities. Many have wounds you can see, and many have wounds you can't see, like post-traumatic stress disorder. Now that these warriors are back home, they are ready to enter the civilian workforce. To help, Wounded Warrior Project has developed the Warriors to Work program a career counseling service that helps warriors translate their military experience to the civilian workplace. These extraordinary men and women bring proven world-class job skills and a unique perspective on teamwork to the job. And to ensure the right warrior finds the right job, Wounded Warrior Project works with employers to find just the right match. When you hire a wounded warrior, you hire an intelligent, talented, and committed new employee. Contact Wounded Warrior Project at findwwp.org. Welcome home, the brave. You want to know what time it is? It's time to bring the brave. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. It is I, your lovable host, Elrod, coming to you live once again from the Bunker Eye Studio, located somewhere within the great Granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is live free or die. Here it is, we're kicking off this Monday morning, Monday, February number 27 in the year of our Lord 2017. The second month of the year, the new year, is almost done. And in two days we'll be celebrating, let the Ides of March Will March come in like a lamb, or will it come in like a lion? I guess we'll find out on Wednesday. Good old hump day, won't we? Um, So wherever it is you are, it's not going to be the same everywhere on the planet, but uh, wherever you are, you'll get to make sure you write it down, because I always do this every year. Well, did it come in like a lamb and go out like a lion this year? And I always say I'm going to write it down and remember it. So Wednesday we'll do something a little, little bit special to celebrate Lamb or Lion Day. For March. It should be a holiday, shouldn't it? It should be a holiday. Anyway, the number here is 603-835-3226. Um, there, <laughs> there, there, there's probably some people that would think that that would be idolatrous or idolatry to uh, uh, celebrate Lamb or, Lamb or Lion Day. Um, it's, you know, there are you know, I, I, I don't, I don't particularly like bash, bashing. Well, religion is a very interesting thing and it's quite interesting what people consider and construe to be religion and what they don't consider or construe to be religion. But it all stems from one thing. Religion, no matter what it is, is an invention of man, not God. Now, when Jesus Christ was on this planet, there was no religion. In fact, Jesus fought against the religion of the day. And some people say, well, that's, that's you know, Christ is where the Catholic Church begins. No, it's not, actually. Do people, you know how many Catholics really don't understand or realize what the word Catholic really means? 
It means universal. And if you look at the what the the Catholic Roman or Holy Roman Catholic Church really is all about, there is some universal universality in it. And you, in this current Pope, I, I, and he's 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 embraced certain aspects of other religions. He's told Catholics, you know, it's, it's not so bad to be a uh, is you know to be a Muslim. It's not so bad to be a Bo- Buddhist. It's not so bad to really. Well, if you go back to the beginning of Constant of uh, uh, you know Constantine, you can see that the, the beginnings of of what Constantine did to be to, to get Christianity into the homes of just about every Roman of the day. He had to establish a church that would allow for the adoption of all kinds of paganistic, what we call paganistic, paganistic rituals. And this got adapted into what we now call the traditional Roman Catholic Church. A lot of that stuff, you know, there is, where does anybody say that you got to have a, 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 a pope? Christ never said anything about a pope. You got to go to church to, for confession. And, and trust me, Catholics are not the only ones who, who believe this. So I'm not bashing Catholics. I'm just asking you to believe or to, to think about what you believe. You know, right there in the Bible, the, Christ himself said, no one comes to the Father or gets to the Holy Father except through me. And that you are to pray directly to God through me. Ask for your forgiveness. And what do we do in some religions? You have to go confess your sins to a priest or a father or whoever the church leader is. That's not what the Bible says. There's no intermediate, and, and Pope is the, the Pope, or, or, and it's not just the Pope. There, there are other religions that have a, a Pope-like figure. And, and these, these Pope-like figures are the intermediary between man and God. Christ didn't say that there was, an, he was the intermediary. He didn't make anybody else the intermediary. I'm just saying not to bash any particular religion. Yeah, Catholic is the largest, so people are going to focus on the Catholic. But you know, the, the, you, you have other religions that have Pope-like figures as well. I mean, and they, they have a hierarchy like cardinals and bishops and, and stuff like that. And it's just not the, Catholic, not the Roman Catholic Church that has this kind of stuff. But all I ask is that people actually stop and think. Is this matching up to what you actually believe? If it does, great. If it doesn't, then I have, then you got to ask yourself another question. What the hell are you doing? And there were plenty of people that, that asked that question, what the hell are we doing? And thus they broke away and they formed the various denominations of Protestantism. Now, of which I, I am a Protestant, but I got to tell you, we got just as many problems as the Catholics do when it comes to this sort of stuff. Really do. And it's all because man invented religion. Not God. God gave us his word. And we've taken that word and interpreted it in a million different ways. And it's not up for interpretation. Just like the Constitution is not up for interpretation. Oh, you can interpret it this way, Roger. No, you cannot interpret it any way except for what it was intended to be. And and we have lots and lots and lots of documentation that tells us exactly what the founders meant by every single sentence in the Constitution. We don't have to wonder. All we have to do is go back and and read everything that they ever wrote or spoke. And they told us exactly what they meant. If you wanted wanted to understand uh, some of the the, uh, uh, court decisions and what the the Supreme Court may have said, we'll go back to the original Supreme Court when you had the originalist on on the Supreme Court, when you had the Chief Justice, who was one of the signers of the Constitution, they know exactly what it meant. 
And yet we have people interpreting it today and say, well, it doesn't mean that. And, they get, and then if you go back, you know, 200 years and we're, the Supreme Court today versus 200 years ago talked about this or made a ruling on this. And they, in today's courts, it goes totally opposite of what the originals said it should be thought of or interpreted as. No, you're not to interpret anything. When it comes to stuff like this, you don't interpret because it is pretty damn clear if you go back and read the original in the context of when it was written, you can fairly understand what the original intent was. That is all that counts as the original intent. If you disagree with the original intent, that's fine. Then utilize the laws within the Constitution to change the Constitution if you want to make changes. You don't get to do it by... Uh, by interpreting it a different way, there's no interpretation to it. Interpreting the Constitution actually is unconstitutional. Because you can interpret any damn way you want. I mean, for crying out loud, if that if people did not interpret things to fit the way they wanted to fit, we wouldn't have 50,000 different denominations in Christianity. That's all interpretation does. It allows one to feel good about their own belief, regardless of what the actual facts are. Chief Justice Roberts interpreted the Constitution to mean such that he could rewrite a part of, a part of the Obamacare law to, to turn it into a tax. No, he just did something highly unconstitutional. That hey, who's going to stop him, right? Who's going to stop the chief? Oh, the chief justice is the end all be all. I mean, you know, the Supreme Court, whatever the Supreme Court says goes. Who said that? That's not in the Constitution. So all of a sudden, sometime in modern history, we've decided to interpret the Constitution, meaning that this is the end all be all interpreter of the Constitution. And once they make their decision, that's it. When did that come into being? Because that was never intended to be the case. Plain and simple. And so now we have a bunch of people out there that are saying, well, you know, we're going to go judge shopping. So we can find a judge that's going to believe the way we believe and interpret the way we interpret. And we're going to impose that interpretation on everybody. Well, that's unconstitutional. Right, you don't get to decide. You're right. I don't get to decide, and neither do you, because it's already been decided. And if you don't like the decision, it's called amend the Constitution. You know, we used to do things like that in this country. We used to actually follow the Constitution, and actually when we wanted to change the very fabric of the way this country was governed, we actually would amend the Constitution. We didn't try to find a judge who would rewrite a law which is unconstitutional. We didn't we didn't look for a judge who was going to step, you know, step out of his role and into another role and interpret what, you know, in another branch of government and keep the other branch of government from doing its constitutional duty because they didn't like it. That particular judge didn't like it. No. We didn't used to do that. We used to think we used to do things by the book or by the constitution. No, sir, there are people that didn't like people who drank alcohol. So what did they do? They amended the Constitution to make alcohol illegal. And then when they realized, well, that was a mistake, we really shouldn't do that. Somebody didn't make a law just to, just to, change, to change it back. No, 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 no. They, they actually went and had a constitutional amendment that repealed the constitutional amendment that called for this country to be dry. See, we used to do things like that. And now we don't. And we don't do things like that because you have, a, you have a particular political belief system in some people that think, well, nobody's ever going to, to agree the way we minority agree. You know, called liberal, liberalism? The vast majority of Americans do not believe in all-out liberalism. 
So there's no way in hell they would ever be able to amend the Constitution to get their junk passed. So what did they do? They started looking for liberal judges who would step outside of their constitutional barriers and duties. And then the rest of us allowed them to do that. And so now it's at the point, well, pfft, well, we got to we got to go to court to fight this unconstitutional order. No, you don't. I have said on this program before that because the judge was acting super constitutionally outside of the Constitution when he tried to ban the executive order of Donald Trump when the Constitution specifically says the, and the laws of, that were passed by Congress and signed by previous presidents gave all this power to the president to determine who gets to come into this country. A court has no jurisdiction over that. The Constitution is clear. So Trump could have just ignored the Constitution and told every single department under his purveyance on the executive federal level, you're going to do what I just told you to do because I have the constitutional power to do it, and this judge does not. But instead... One of the things that I that that infuriated me was that uh, about Trump early on is that he allowed this one judge in the state of Washington to determine the entire course, and he's just a district judge to 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 determine the entire course of the entire country, and for it to let let it affect his foreign policy position. I was livid about that, but I understand. That there are politics in play, and they've, he's got to you know, play by... No, I'm saying Donald Trump has already proven he doesn't have to play by anybody else's rules. So that's not a good time to start playing by the liberal rules. I need, we need a president, in, and we need to get behind Donald Trump as president, to totally eviscerate all the unconstitutional rules and laws and, and, and procedures that the left wants to put in place, or has put in place. Because if it ain't constitutional... I, you can ignore it. And then they're going to have to go and prove why it is constitutional when it's not. What are they going to do? I know you got Maxine Waters. Well, well, we'll just impeach him. Really? You know, these, trust me, these people are so upset that, that Bill Clinton got impeached for rightfully so. And he should have been convicted to tell you the truth. But they're so upset that their guy, their favorite guy in modern history, he got impeached for doing something illegal, actually. Go figure. And so now every time a president, somebody they don't like, you know, George W. Bush, got to impeach George W. Bush. Why? Because he's, you know, it's an impeachable offense. That's not an impeachable offense. You, You just disagree with him politically. Well, do you think that if Donald Trump talked to the Russians before he got inaugurated, and that's an impeachable, def- impeachable defense? Yes. Oh, so every president who's, who's been elected, who has talked to any foreign entity before they were inaugurated, should also be impeached. Well, yeah, they can't say that because every modern president, their administration, has reached out to other governments before they were inaugurated. Why? Because in this day and age, you don't want to go into the in, into the Oval Office cold turkey, not knowing a damn thing. That's why and Democrats as well as Republicans have done this. So of course they cannot agree that everybody needs to be impeached if that's the case. Well, it's unconstitutional to jerry rig and to pick and choose. By the way. The law is the law, one way or the other. You're listening to The Rod Eccles Show, the coolest, most politically incorrect, conservative black man on the planet. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. 
$15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. Their very beliefs, if not um, often, translate into politics. So, so therefore, you cannot say that you separate. You know, you cannot uh, talk and have a polite conversation, polite company, or civilized, uh, civilized, civilized company of um, uh, politics or religion, because you can't separate the two out of every any anybody. And if you're a person that says, "Well, I don't get into politics." Well, no, you're wrong. You do. Maybe you don't participate by voting, but you are involved in politics, whether you like it or not. And your silence or your voice lends credence to what it happens in politics to you and for you in your name. If you know, let me put it to you this way. If somebody, if somebody in politics says, you know what? Everybody wants the death penalty to be, to be reinstated. And you know, basically if you don't stand up and say, no, you don't, then your silence gives accolades to the person who says that you want it. So this whole, no I mean, it it, it sounds good to say that, you know, you don't discuss politics and and religion in polite civil civil company. But the reality is, is that you do. And that if you don't pay attention, if you don't speak up, 
then you are speaking up. And you are entertaining and giving permission to politicians to do what they do. So your best bet is to, to is to understand what's going on, to take a position, and let your voice be heard. Because your silence, that also speaks volumes. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved. And four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. Woo! There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. 
It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. I'm not Rod Eccles, and I approve this message. There's something else going on out there that is uh, in increasing numbers, and um, it's alarming. Um, now, now, I know Alex Jones is is railing right now against the the, the turning over of the internet to the UN and other foreign entities, and, and and rightfully so. But that's not what I'm what this is about, and it's not this is what's happening now is not because the internet uh, is being turned over and, and I, I've got some stuff here in the paper pile about um, uh, the restricting and reducing of freedom on the internet and the internet, internet was the last place for uh, you know complete and total freedom which is why some countries banned the internet as a whole like North Korea or they um, they ban certain sites like they do in China and Iran and such. But this is something that's more insidious. Uh, it, and it isn't because they're not proliferating because of, uh, because of the Internet being handed over, basically. You know, the control strings being handed over to the UN and other foreign entities. But simply because hackers and, and people who wish to do nefarious things have figured out that this is a way to get... More and more people ensnared, and and it, this is called clickbait. Now, what is I cannot I can't tell you how how much I hate clickbait. Now, clickbait you used to be able to see it because it tell you know it's usually it, it it's usually about some celebrity or star or sports star or something like that. You know, the top ten celebrities of this, and you won't believe what these ten celebrities that child celebrities look like today or. You know, this celebrity was once gorgeous, and so were these celebrities, and this is what they look like now. or so, You know, a bunch of crap like that. You know, that's clickbait. The problem is, is now clickbait is turning into something, they're tur- turning into headlines that are being picked up by news sites, even by drudge. And it's got decent headlines, and you click on the headline, and it's clickbait. Because you got to click through constantly in order to get the whole story. Because the story comes in, what, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 panels. I hate those. One, they clog up your, your computer because they're so loaded with spyware and cookies and ads. It is redundant. I, well, obviously they work. Because how do you know if something works? Because people keep using that same technique or companies keep using that same technique. Now, these obviously, these these clickbait places are not, um, most of them are not owned by comp- individual companies. They're owned by individual people who then use all the, you know, the the, the ability to, to, to put on all these different ads to make money off them. I get it. But I mean, really? I mean, you, you you go to one and you got a you got a a single short you know three paragraph story. Um, but it takes forever for that story to load because thirty different ads and pop ups have to have to load first. Yeah, I, you know, people need to be, and they're starting to hide stuff. They're starting to hide nefarious stuff in, in sites like these. So it gets very, it's, it's a lot more difficult to figure out which are, which are the good sites and which are the bad sites. I know. It, it's, it's, it's becoming, look, this is another reason that is going the rodeckles.net 
website is going to be changing. And we're going to be adding um, a couple of new sites. Now, I'm not going to give you their names right now um, because we still have to uh, solidify and secure the, the, uh, the website addresses. Uh, but we're going to do that this week, and then I'll be able to tell you what they are. But we're going to try to figure out ahead of time what all this clickbait stuff is and, and av- avoid giving it to you. And we're not going to, I'm not going to have clickbait sites. Not going to be all this, these ads all over the place. In fact, if you go to, if you go to my site right now, you won't find a, if you find an ad on rodeckles.net, I didn't put it there. Just so you know. Not a single ad. Now we will be adding sponsor ads but you'll know that there are sponsors because you'll hear them on the program first. So right now there isn't anybody. Even some of the sponsors that we have now, are not, there's, there are no ads over there. So if you go to rodeckles.net and you find an ad, let me know because we didn't put it there. We've stripped all ads. Because of this problem. And, and it's, it's getting worse. But, um, you know, we're, I'm trying to put up some web properties that, that give you a little bit of a, a, a rest from, from all that noise. And, and you know, Facebook is kind of like that now and um, where they have ads. And, and they have the clickbait ads. You never know. It's, it's, really hard to, to, it's really hard to figure some of this stuff out. And it really ticks me off to no know, uh, know end because I don't, I don't like – having my computers bogged down with a bunch of, you know, one of the things that you should not have to do, I, I, you know, we can say it's a utopia type of thing, but we shouldn't have our, we shouldn't have to load up our computers. It slows them down because we buy new computers. We buy these certain types of machines because they're lightning fast. But the problem is we often have to load them down with anti spyware and, you know, anti this and anti that and firewalls and fire blockers and, spam blockers and all this and it slows everything down but if we don't put that stuff on the computer our computer can get you know it can get infected they can steal our our personal information they can turn the computer into a slave a slave machine which then does all kinds of nefarious things across the net uh and and one one day you know somebody's going to come knocking on your door well you know your ip address was used for this and you're thinking what and then they go and do a forensics on your computer and say, yeah, well, you're not at fault because this was being used by somebody else, you know, over here. And that kind of stuff happens. But if you don't put all this anti, you know, if you don't put all this protection software on the computer, which slows down your computer, then your computer is going to get slowed down and bogged down by all the garbage that's out there anyway. And without you even knowing it, you can even be in, your computer can be even utilized and used for illegal or nefarious means including terrorism. And then you then you got to worry about trying to figure out how to prove that you're innocent of all this stuff. You had no idea. But yeah, I, it's, it's the world we live in. It is the world that we live in. Now, I don't it, is it I I don't know if you can actually do a uh, um sort of be kind of well maybe is there a, a a search engine out there that 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 knows all the clickbait stuff and eliminates it from searches i mean do you really want that do, do you want search engines to eliminate and filter out certain sites i mean uh, i mean there are obvious you what you would think would be obvious things i mean you, you don't necessarily um want to go to a site that is known to be evil. But do you want, do you want somebody else or an algorithm determining what you really can and can't see? I mean, isn't that what Google has been accused of doing a few times? Haven't we noticed that when when we Google certain terms, especially during the election season, we noticed certain things and we couldn't find certain things because Google was was their algorithm had changed what we were looking for. 
and how upset when people found out how upset they were about it. Do you, I mean, so do you really want a particular company to develop an algorithm that limits what you see? Oh, it's a very, very touchy question, isn't it? Yeah, I don't like the fact about by being duped into going to a clickbait site. But, and I don't like the fact that being duped and going to a clickbait site, even when I when I Google or Bing or Yahoo something or where is it Ask. Uh, but uh, do I want them to start limiting what I could possibly see? Aren't aren't there enough limits already? I'm just asking. I don't, I don't personally myself, it's, it's, I'm kind of torn between the two. I mean, yeah, I don't want to be, I don't want to be, you know, snaked into going to a clickbait and then having my computer hijacked, but then I don't want all these algorithms that are trying to eliminate this, these clickbait sites to start eliminating and preventing me from seeing legit sites because that happens. So maybe that's why, you know, Drudge, they, they find something. Well, you would think that they, they would actually read it and they would know that it's, but for whatever reason, that they, they, they seem to think that it's, um, and, and you know what, even though it is clickbait, I, I have to say that even though it, it's annoying, uh, at least if it is on Drudge and it's a clickbait site, it, you, you got to go through the 10 panels, but you, you do get the story, but it, albeit in 10 panels. So they're not, they're not faking anything on you. It's just the way they're presenting it. So I'm just... If you are a click if you are a legitimate site out there stop using clickbait techniques please that's all I'm asking uh, so you're not going to find it on on any of my sites any any of the zinc media sites are definitely staying away from the clickbait mentality cuz I can't stand it I can't but uh anyway that was off. That was a little tangent. Didn't mean to have to cover that, but uh, it is what it is, folks. People are getting hit hammered by this. Hey, Lena Del Rey, speaking of evilness, and got into a little bit of a conversation and dissertation last week with a few people who were trying to take me to task on this. And basically all I said was, is that if Donald Trump is anointed by God, then then nobody can touch him. If Donald Trump is anointed by God, and as long as Donald Trump is doing the will of God, nobody can harm him, not even by witchcraft. God is more is more powerful than witchcraft. And I had people taking me to task and saying, oh, well, you don't know if he's anointed. How can you say he's anointed? I'm like, people? The first word I used was if. If... <laughs> If Donald Trump is annoying, because everybody, you know, you got two sides. Everybody's all, you know, up in arms about, oh, my God, they're going to, you know, they're going to try to kill Donald Trump and, and they're going to witchcraft and this. And I'm like, oh, calm down. If Donald Trump is anointed to be president by God, then this witchcraft stuff isn't going to work. And then I, I just really get people telling me, well, how do you know he's anointed? I don't. I didn't say he was. I said if. If he is. You know, and even if he is, and especially if he's not, then you're supposed to stand in the gap and pr uh, pray without ceasing. I mean, th th this is... I, I'm, I'm, everybody everywhere has, is flipping out. They don't, they don't pay attention to what's in front of them. We and, and you know I, sometimes I'm guilty of this and I have to go back and I have to reread something and I'm thinking oh wait wait a minute I misinterpreted that the first time because I was letting my own personal feelings take over instead of using my logic instead of what looking for the truth and I've seen it so much that people are ignoring that one little two letter word if and they're interpreting it to say Donald Trump is anointed. Instead of if Donald Trump is anointed. So they're, they're tossing out that, that one little two-letter word and it changes the whole meaning of that sentence. 
And now people are thinking that I'm saying that, well, I know for sure that Donald Trump is anointed by God, and therefore none of this is going to work. And how the hell do I know if he's anointed? Well, I don't. I don't know. God didn't tell me. Which is why I put in that two-letter word at the beginning of the sentence. If. Meaning, he might be, he may not be. I don't know, but if he is, that's the whole meaning of that. But you have these people out there who are trying to use witchcraft to rid the world of Donald Trump. Now, and, and they're talking about, well, you know, we're going to, this is, uh, this is not, this is not Lord of the Rings type of thing where you bind people or you bind, you know, the evil essence into a ring. We're talking, you know, well, we have good, uh, Lena Del Rey is a good little witch. Well, if she's using magic to try to derail or to kill Donald Trump, that's black magic, not white magic. And that's not good. Now, I know people are going to say, well, she didn't say that. Why are you saying she, I said, if that's what she, I don't know what she's doing. I do know that there has been a call to witches all over the world, not just here. To try to somehow either bind or kill Donald Trump. That, that we know this. This is this has been a story, a big story. Well, not as big as it should have been. But this is supposed supposedly was supposed to happen uh, last Friday at midnight. Well, the problem is, is it couldn't have been Friday at midnight. It would have been Saturday at midnight. But anyway, Friday. Heading into the weekend, there was supposed to be a. a I, no, I don't know if it was. I guess it was Eastern time. The problem is, is you can't have witches all over the planet do it at the same time because it's not, if midnight is, is, is the powerful hour, well, it's not midnight everywhere. Which is another, it, I don't know. It's not midnight everywhere. So did we have a 24-hour period of time where witches all over the world were, were casting their spells, their white magic and black magic at the same time? And would not white magic cancel out black black magic? I don't, I don't delve into witchcraft, so I, that I have not studied it a lot, so I don't know how the two work against each other or with each other. I do one's supposed to be good, and one's supposed to be bad. But if it's good, will it actually work to be bad? I mean, if Donald Trump is a good guy, and you're out there with white white rich witchcraft, would it work against him? Yeah, I don't I don't know. One of the one of those subjects I have not had an interest in learning a lot about. But l- reading some of this stuff and and catching a couple of videos on this stuff is is actually pretty frightening that you would have people go to this this length on Donald J Trump. I mean, it's just it, it, we've even George W Bush didn't say a damn word for nearly 8 years about a uh, negative about Barack Obama. And that we're we're a month into into Trump's administration, and he's already spoken out against Trump. I mean, this is just it, this is you know, folks. In, in a way, um, this is how you know that you're that you've got the right guy. Because when the world is against you, and tries to tries to beset uh, the principalities of darkness and evil upon you, then you must be on the right track. You must be on the on the road of light. Because if Donald Trump was really all that evil, all these people wouldn't be so so quick to jump to be against them. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. 
$15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes and Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. There are so many things that one could actually look at um, and, and, and decide that possibly it is more likely than not that Donald Trump is no, not necessarily anointed, but actually the one that has uh, been given to us. Um, and it is it is something that 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 is is real simply because you have so many factions standing up against them. Now, look, you have to understand, I know that they're running around, you know, saying that Trump is a fascist and all this kind of stuff, but you have to understand that, that, that there were not a bunch of, a bunch of different factions running up against Hitler. And you could say, well, we're trying to learn from history. No, that's a bunch of bullshit too. Not trying to learn anything from history when it comes to this kind of stuff, because if it were, they wouldn't be called, if they were, they weren't, they wouldn't be calling Donald Trump fascist, fascist, because by, the ones who are calling him fascists are acting more like fascists than Donald Trump is. But in any case, you have the uh, um, you have these people from just about everywhere who are rising up against him. Now, now we know biblically speaking that this is what happens to good good people, good men, and they often get, I hate to say it, but they often get taken out early. Um. You know, they have a vision, they take a stance, and they cannot be swayed or moved from that stance, and the only way you can stop them is to take them out. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., anybody? I mean, there, there, were, there were principalities and people all around Dr. King that, because Dr. King stood for something that was good and holy, and... There were people on the evil side that could not stand that, and they could not stop him, short of killing him. So, look, this is what they're trying to do with this witchcraft stuff and Donald Trump. We can't stop him, so let's kill him, so they say. Have you ever thought to yourself, I'm a leftist elite Hollywood a-hole? 
If so, good news. The Rod Eccles Hollywood Community College is now open, featuring such courses as Unemployment is not paid vacation. No, Americans don't want to spend $19 for an order of french fries and the ever-popular Shut the Hell Up. Why, just listen to this big-time celebrity endorsement. I'm not Rosie O'Donnell, and I think this school's offensive, sexist, and racist. And I think you're a giant a-hole who needs to shut the hell up. Hey, we teach a course in that. The Rod Eccles Hollywood Community College, where being an a-hole is not a guarantee you'll be an A student. The following program is recommended for mature individuals and may contain material unsuitable for morons, cretins, and dishwipes. If you are a moron or a member of the PTL club, please turn off your radio because we don't need any more stupid, narrow-minded, pencil-neck geeks who wouldn't know the First Amendment if it came up and bit them on the butt. Thank you. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill. A breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. The human voice. It can be sweet as music, powerful as thunder, and so my fellow Americans, cheerful as laughter. <laughs> but for millions of people, it can also be a sign of COPD. This serious lung disease can make it so hard to breathe, you often can't catch a breath or finish a sentence, let alone carry a tune. And many who have COPD don't even know it. That's where your voice comes in. If you think you or a loved one have symptoms, talk with a health care provider. Early diagnosis can mean better treatments and quality of life. Join us in raising our voices for the millions with COPD who can't. Learn more, breathe better at NIH.gov.
as a mother, you don't want to have to worry about this bill is coming, but then she needs this chemo. That's a decision you shouldn't have to make. It's a huge burden lifted financially, and so it allows you to give singular focus to your child. I've never known a hospital that takes care of their patients so thoroughly. That was the first thing I was like, how are we going to do this? When they told us that we didn't have to pay a single bill, I was like, wow. They pretty much have saved us. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders, and now your focus is supporting this child. There is not another hospital like St. Jude. The patient care is unmatchable. It saved my life. It saved my daughter's life. It saved our family. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. We leave no warrior behind. Wounded Warrior Project is a nonprofit organization created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war. Whether those scars are physical or mental, we're here to make sure that they heal. And whether it's helping those with post-traumatic stress disorder live a normal life again or giving much-needed support to injured warriors and veterans' hospitals, because no one deserves our help more than the men and women who risk their lives to keep us safe. Wounded Warrior Project. We never leave a fallen warrior behind. Ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. You want to know what time it is? It's time to bring the raid. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. that practices some pagan rituals, you know, like bringing Christmas trees and greenery into into his household around the holiday time, Christmas time. And, you know, unfortunately, there's probably half a dozen other uh, benign paganistic rituals that, that, that we practice without actually realizing that they're actually or, uh, originate in paganism. But it's okay, because we've been able to change the meaning of those things. Have we not? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we have. So I, I guess this whole notion that we're not allowed to change the meaning of anything is um, is is false. But you got to be careful because there is stuff that the meanings can't be changed. If you do, it means, you know, it doesn't mean the same anymore. And our Constitution is one of those. The Bible is another one. I don't care what Bible you're talking about. It could be the Christian Bible. It could be the Jewish Bible. It could be, you know, I know they all are. They're not all called Bibles, but basically... You know what the word Bible really means? It means book. Ugh. Sometimes it's terrible that you have to actually explain this kind of stuff. As also, I'll, I'll, I'll often say, say something like, well, you know, the Islamic Bible. It's not a Bible! It's not a book? Well, yeah, it is a book. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, it's... You know, you, you got you just gotta gotta be careful, folks. You really gotta be. You just can't accept things blindly. This is what too many people often do: is they just accept things. Well, this is how we get all these celebrities who who thinks they think they have so much influence, um, and then they fall flat in their face. But people still support them. I can never get that anyway. But anyway, uh, the number here is six zero three eight three five three two two. 
6 as we begin our hour number three here on the Rod Eccles Show. Unbelievable as it sounds, as it is, it is our number three already. The fastest three hours in Internet Talk Radio is right here. As, um, as, as it warms up a little bit out there, it's about 45, mid-40s today. Uh, it's sunny, partly sunny, mostly sunny, I guess, uh, outside here in northern New England. Um, and, and yeah, it's a good day. It's a good Monday morning. It's kind of quiet out there. Uh, well, this is a, uh, um, vacation week, you know, midwinter recess here in New Hampshire. Now, last week it was in Massachusetts. They had the midwinter recess that was, uh, down in mass, but it, th- this, this week it is up here in New Hampshire. Uh, teachers have it off, students have it off, schools are closed, you know, just t- everybody just having a good old week-long snow day, basically. Um, and that's fine, I get, I don't remember having a midwinter, well, we did, I guess, we, we had a week off. Some school districts I went to, in, when you know, as, as a kid, we didn't have. But then we got off like we we were done with school like the last week of May, first week of of June, which was a lot better than having a week off. Because you know, if you want to go, you know, if you're a kid and you want to go sledding in the in in the northern climes, and you can do that on the weekends. You don't need to. Why why waste all that wonderful? You know, short. <laughs> short. Well, when you're living in northern Michigan. And it's very, you know, you can go a whole week without seeing the sun because it'd be that overcast and cloudy. Um, it, it, sometimes it was just awful. But, uh, but why, you know, and, and the days are short. Well, why even bother having a week off? There's not much you're going to get done. But summers, on the other hand, different story. Have a lot more fun. Um, summer day, More summer days. Uh, I'm all for more summer days. Absolutely. I wish we had more summer, warm summer days up here in New England. Um, but, but you know, we are where we are, and we don't. So, I mean, I can complain about the cold sometimes. I don't mind cold just when it gets... I just don't believe, and I, and I talk to God about this constantly, I don't think it's necessary for the temperature to dip below 20 degrees. There's no reason for it. There is no... <laughs> there probably is some sort of good, legitimate... Uh, climatological reason for doing that, but I don't see one. So I tell God, you know, Lord, there, there's, 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 there's no reason for it to go below 20 degrees. I understand. 32 is for snow. Got it. You know, you can put it in the 20s. Th- that's fine too, but there's no reason for it to really. And as far as getting below zero, oh, that's, that's just torture. I mean, that's just not right. Cause then it's not, that's not, that's not temperatures fit for man nor beast. Seriously, but you know, obviously, we get we get those days, and there are there are places on the planet where it's below twenty or below zero for extended periods of time. And uh, I don't know; I'm just not not into that kind of thing. I'm not into that kind of torture um, to the body, whether the body be a, be an animal or a human. And speaking of of torture to the body. It appears that our government, uh, it's now, now a lot of people are trying to blame Trump on this. This was put into place before Trump was even elected, let alone inaugurated. This is an Obama administration thing. And you have to ask yourself, where the hell is this going to go and where is it going to stop? How is it we're going to eliminate this? And this came about, uh, this is um, a story that came about from an AP News article. Uh, from an Emory D'Alessio, D-A-L-E-S-I-O. And, um, well, no, it wasn't him. It was somebody else. There's another story with him on it. In any case, it was, a, it was I do believe it was an AP story. And it appears that, that well, it's not appears, it actually happened, that there is a story out there that is not being widely Red, um, and it wasn't AP, I'm sorry, it was from ZeroHedge.com. I'm just going through my paper pile here and trying to coordinate it with um, the electronics. 
But you have you have a piece here on Zero Hedge by Tyler Durden. D U R D E N. And he is talking about security at an airport. We weren't told about this. We're still not really being told about it. I mean, th- th- this is when I when I'm re- when I read this, and I'm thinking, okay, this is really kind of sinister. And then Tyler does something remarkable. He backs up his story with a government page about this. Here's the story. U.S. Marshals scanning your retina. U.S. Marshals, not the TSA, and not at the TSA checkpoint. But you know those long galleyways or hallways or extended walkways that go out to airplanes now. And that we, if you've ever been in the airport, you've ever been into to a major airport. This is you don't walk out into the runway and climb up those stairs to you. You're you're comfortably um, shielded from the elements from the terminal all the way to the to the jet door. Well, evidently, in in the jet walkway. Recently, there were U.S. two U.S. marshals who did not seem to give you a choice. You had to go through a retinal eye scan before you could board the aircraft. Nobody was expecting it. They warned no one, told no one. So here's the story. He says, he starts out by saying, for some 15 years, airport security has become steadily more invasive and that it has. There are ev- there are ever more checkpoints ever more request for documents as you make your way from the airport entrance to the airplane. Passengers have adapted to these new changes as they come. But he says, my latest flight to Mexico, originating in Atlanta, presented all passengers with something I had never seen before. We'd already been through, uh, been through the checkpoint. Our boarding passes checked, our passports checked. Uh, we've been through the scanners and the pat downs and the and the uh, and you know of course the, the the X-ray body machine X-ray that pictures you naked. And and at the gate, East passenger had already had their tickets scanned, and we were all uh, walking on the jet bridge to to go go to the boarding. And of course, you know you get your boarding passes before you get to enter the the the, the jet the jet walkway. Your boarding pass is scanned yet again to make sure that you're on the right flight and you're the right person. And uh, then you get to go through. You've, che- you've passed all of those checkpoints. All those checkpoints that are supposed to keep you safe on the aircraft. And boom, you get at the end of the walkway just before you get to the door to the aircraft. And there is a new layer of security that you must pass through. And there were two U.S. Marshals, heavily armed and dressed in dystopian style black regalia. As he, as he, trust me, I've seen this type of this type of uh, uh, uniform before. And he stood next to a, an upright machine with a glowing green eye. Every passenger, one by one, was told to step on a mat and look into the green scanner. It was scanning our eyes and matching that scan with the passport, which was also scanned yet again. Now, folks, obviously, the vast majority of Americans, now people are asking, well, did they get rid of this information? Here's the deal. Most Americans have never had their eyes or retina scanned before, so it's not matching to anything. What you had right there without your permission is government agents actually for the first time testing equipment that actually put your face and tied it to your retina scan. Now, some people think, well, they were just trying to make sure I'm, I'm who I am. They couldn't tie your retina to who you are because you've never had your retina scanned before. 
Now, some people might say, well, this is just a uh, conspiracy theorist thing, Rod. It's not real. Oh, au contraire, mon frere. If you go to the U.S. government website of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection site, I'll put links on, of this on rodeckles.net. There is something, there is an article or a post that explains to you, Lucy, all about this. Biometric travel security initiatives. Uh, biometric initiatives systems recently tested or deployed. Deployed is not testing, folks. Deployed is not a test. Starting on June 13, 2016. Still under the Obama administration. Did anybody hear about this? Anybody? This is the first time I'm hearing of this. This was not put out there. And trust me, I've had to go through the Atlanta airport, and I didn't know about it. They're now trying to t- trying to tag you before you leave the country. Now, I thought your passport really was your permission to leave. That That's pretty diabolical to say that you need permission to leave the United States of America. And now they want to start implementing this stuff What are they doing with all this information? And of course, they're they're using the good old term, well, we're just trying to keep what? Keep you safe. Safe from whom? Now you're going to tell me, well, is this, is this how they're going to get rid of this notion? Uh, we had a story here in New Hampshire not too long ago, uh, a couple of weeks ago. New Hampshire family, their 14-year-old son. His name was on the no-fly list. Their last name was Haas, H-A-A-S. Their son was on the no, son's name was on the no-fly list. Nobody else in the family, just this... And they almost, now the kid is in, it was in uh, baseball and he was going to some baseball tournament or camp and they almost didn't let him on the plane. And even though the TSA agents and, and these people said it, the TSA agents knew that it was a mistake and that he shouldn't have been on it, but yet and still they had to go through the entire procedure. Well, if they knew it was a mistake, there was no way to correct the mistake and not go through all that that procedure. Oh yeah, he had to go through the search, you know, the pat the uh, the the invasive pat down, the, the taking apart of your clothes and your belts and your backpacks and your gar- and your your luggage and everything. They had to go through all that. They knew it was a mistake, but they had to go through all that. You know, I had to go through a couple of pat downs. You know, just uh, you know the pat downs. If you've ever been to a, if you've ever had a full body invasive pat down by the TSA, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you've probably seen a number of these types of things on on YouTube in video. But yet they said, "Well, we know this is a mistake, but we got to do this." So there's no procedure, and now the parents are wondering, "Well." How do we get his name off of this list? And they're told, "Well, you, you got to go through certain things, and it could take you up to six months." Or more. Wait. So the government agents acknowledged that there was an issue, that there was a problem, it was a mistake. And yet the parents are going to have to go through a six-month ordeal, probably have to hire a lawyer in order to clear their kid's name. And yet you tell me that you think it's a good idea for the government to have even more biological information about us? Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. 
$15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand, and most wouldn't believe. 5 Plus 2 Equals Perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must-read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past, and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement. But now, there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. You know, this they've got this thing going on. It well it was a it was a test. They call it a test. They were testing the system to de- to be deployed, actually. Now, this is what it's called. This is a, bio- a biometric initiatives um, recently tested or deployed here in the United States. And they're, they, they've given this a name. It is called the Departure Information System. And what, what this guy experienced was, was Departure Information Systems Test. Now, this is directly from the governmental website. One of CBP's um, latest initiatives, which is the uh, uh, Custom and Border Protection. So one of CBP's latest initiatives conducted in partnership with Delta Airlines is CBP's Departure Information Systems Test. Starting on June 13th, 2016, CBP will implement a test at Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport to evaluate CBP's ability uh, of its information systems to compare images of travelers departing the United States against Im- images previously provided. This test will only affect one daily flight from the United States to Japan. He said he was going to Mexico. All travelers must participate in this test. Really? Let me repeat that. All travelers must participate in this test. But once identified as a U.S. citizen, their images will be deleted. Yet we've heard that before. The test of CBP's data system capabilities builds upon lessons learned from CBP's other biometric tests. The test will end no later than September 30th, 2016. I'm sorry. First of all, they didn't tell us about it. They're not explaining it to the American people. They're throwing it up on a governmental website and as a post that nobody really reads. And then they're telling us that we are required to participate in this test. When was that law passed? And who passed it? 
when did we give up our constitutional rights to have all this stuff happen? I, last time I checked, we didn't. But somehow we're capable, we're able to, to, to justify this as a security precaution, as, as a security measure to keep Americans safe you know, from threats domestic and foreign. But, oh my goodness gracious, Donald Trump, in an order to keep Americans safe from threats domestic and, t- and foreign, cannot ban, according to a district judge in Washington state, he can't ban certain pe- uh, people from certain nations. And hey, you can go ahead and get your your picture taken, including of your eyeballs. And that's, you have to. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. 
You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. Woo! There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. Bring the rain. Interesting thing about this this story is is that of course now now on the government website it says that this test would last until September thirtieth of twenty sixteen no later than that. But this guy was on a and it was and it was supposed to be testing those people flying to Japan. Well, if you're going to test something, why the hell would you test it? going to places that are benign. I mean, going to Japan is very benign. When was the last time we had a Japanese terrorist in this country? I'm I'm being serious. But this gentleman was in Atlanta, the Atlanta airport, going to Mexico just a couple of weeks ago. Well, a couple of weeks ago was February of 2017, not September 2016. Now, the questions asked are legitimate ones. You know, he's, he's, he's asking, now to be sure, there might have been some tip-offs that security officials received that triggered these special measures for this flight only. Maybe they were looking for something or someone in particular. Maybe this was a one-time thing, a one-off, and will not become routine. The point is, he points out, is that it happened without any change in the laws or regulations. Whatever the reason, it was some decision made by security. It can happen on any flight for any reason. And who who is in charge of making these decisions? And you want to say that this stuff is being, oh yeah, we do it and uh, we take the information and uh, we delete it. Isn't that what they said about when they first came out with those body, full body scanners? Oh yeah, you know, this stuff, it gets deleted, it doesn't. And then it, it started showing up online. All over the place. Not just not just a one-off. Multiple instances. It happened so often that they had to start changing how they handled the information that they got because it used to just give you a whole the whole look of somebody's body. I mean, you couldn't really tell the face, but uh, you got to see the, the everything. And it was a shock to Americans that it was. Quite a, you want to talk about pornography? It was shock, a shock to Americans to find out that it was absolutely okay to have video screens that can be seen by anybody of an x-ray machine of these people going through totally nude. And so it, oh, these are, you know, nobody's going to see these informa- this information. Nobody's, and then it, all these pictures started showing up on the internet. And it was so bad that finally they decided, well, we're going to have to put some modifications to these things and start covering people up in certain places. So now you want to tell me that this stuff is being deleted, this information is being deleted? Until what? Until it ends up online again? Now this stuff is, this is very important, folks, because we are starting to see everyday stuff coming into being 
for regular consumer items with biometric security measures. You've got cell phones that, that take your that can take your fingerprint, biometric. You've got cell phones and laptops now that, that well, they can, laptops and computers take your, your fingerprint, and now some of them are starting to come out with the technology that can take your, uh, scan your iris. And some are claiming, you know, vocal stuff where they have to, they can recognize your voice pattern and your, and, and your vocal cords and such. Uh, again, another fingerprint, each human being, they may sound alike, but they're not. Uh, because we don't, we don't obviously hear all the, the very nuances of a person's voice, but computers can be programmed to do that. So all this stuff is coming out. And our government wants to get a hold of it. And here we are. Here we are. We've moved from passports. By the way, passports have not always been around. Papers, as you know, to where, where are your papers in order to get into my country? It's not always been around. Do you know what passports actually came into being around sometime shortly after World War I? That's right. Not, not every country got on board with that, but there are some countries that had this nationalistic movement. Uh, you know, that wanted to identify themselves as where they were from and, you know, who their who their home country was and all that kind of stuff. And then it turned into a security thing. But passports, even to come to this country to immigrate, you didn't need any papers. Now, today, they're, you know, I mean, this is George Orwell's world come to uh, come to real life, out of jumping out of the pages of his book, 1984, into real life in 2017. Now, you have to think of it this way. Now, it used to be that you needed permission just to get into somebody's country. Okay, that's understandable. But now you need permission to get out of your own country? Well... I guess this is what it means to put security ahead of freedom. And as as Benjamin Franklin says, when you put basically what Benjamin Franklin said, when you put security ahead of freedom, you get neither. Do you think that you're secure? I I I don't I don't think so. You're not. And we have a bunch of other stuff here. We have, um, um, you know, look, hey, let's not let's not uh, let's, let's not ban potential potential terrorists from getting into the country. But we're sure as hell going to scan you from head to toe before you get before we allow you to leave this country. I don't see any Hollywood stars or starlets complaining about that. By the way, uh, because of the, uh, the the wonderful Oscars giving giving a, an, an Oscar to an Iranian uh, who who was boycotting the U.S. By the way, during this time, Iran holds naval war games amid the rising tensions be, uh, between Iran and the U.S. Now, now understand. Look, those 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 old Iranian naval ships are are troublesome. They're like mosquitoes, and mosquitoes can cause harm to bigger animals. Obviously, we know this. I mean, but let's if the U.S. Navy really wanted to just totally wipe out the Iranian Navy, they could do that in a heartbeat without even blinking twice at doing so. But uh, and, and and sure, they 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 would probably land a few good blows, and of course, the world would hear about it. Oh yeah, the, 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 the you know this naval ship in open waters was nearly sunk by a uh, little tiny Ar- Iranian gnat ship, gnat as in fly, you know gnat. Is it G N A T gnat? A gnat. 
And this is from Yahoo News. Iran launched naval drills at the mouth of the Gulf in the Indian Ocean on Sunday. Uh, Naval commander said as tensions with the U.S. escalated after U.S. President Donald Trump put Tehran on notice for breaking the so-called agreement or treaty that the Obama administration put in place. Um, Since taking office last month, Trump has pledged to get tough with Iran. Uh, warning the Islamic Republic after a, after its ballistic missile test on January 29th. What is that noise I keep hearing? It's like somebody's... It's, um, I must be picking up something. It sounds like somebody's breathing heavy. I'm hearing it in my... I don't know if you guys are hearing it. I hope not. I'm just hearing it in my ear. Uh, made some tweaks to the, um, to the sound system here. I wonder if we have to go back and fix that. But in any case... Uh, Iran's annual exercises will be ha- held in the Strait of Hor- Hormuz and the Gulf of Oman, uh, the Bab el Mandab, and northern parts of the Indian Ocean to train in the fight against terrorism and piracy. Now, isn't that that's that's a joke? They are the terrorists. They support the pirates. <laughs> and this another bla- uh, another blast from the past coming out of Iran. You know, we had the blast from the past here. We had George W. Bush, but we had um, uh, Bush's uh, uh, nemesis in Iran, a former Iranian president uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Writes an open letter to Donald Trump. Uh, and, it, it, you know, I don't usually pick on people's facial features, but did this guy get a nose injection? Because it looks like it's a lot bigger than it was when he was president. I'm just saying. He, you know, he's, get, he's getting, I guess it's because he's getting older, too. He's getting gray in the beard and everything. There's a picture of him on Yahoo News. But it just looks like his, his nose got huge. I don't remember it being that big, but it's very prominent on his face. In any case, um, Iran's ex-president Mahmoud Ahmadinejad uh, published Sunday an open letter to Donald Trump welcoming his criticism of the U.S. political system, but taking issue with his visa ban and attitude to women. Isn't this rich? An Iranian, former Iranian president, uh, you know... (laughs) Iran here, you know, women have to wear burqas and all that kind of crap. Uh, chastising an American president? Well, of course, you know, you're talking about his, his locker room talk that was illegally recorded on a bus with another man. Wasn't talking to any females. Nobody else could overhear them um, outside of being illegally recorded. So, like, you know, I, I guess but I, I am... I don't know. Do Iranians don't have locker room talk? Or is their locker room talk a little bit different? I'm, it's probably a little bit different. You know, it probably ends up, you know, with... and Yes, and, and, and I looked and I wanted to grab her snatch. And then if I did that, I, but I knew if I did that, I would have to stone her to death. I mean, that, that's, how, that's how different it must be then, I guess. I don't know. But uh, that's... That. Hey... In Iran, rape a woman, it's a woman's fault, right? Is that the case here in the U.S.? Hey, you feminist out there, is that the case here in the U.S.? In many cases, depending on on the state and and what actually happened, the woman's name is not even mentioned until it goes to court. But there, you know, it's automatically the woman's fault. But here we're trying to... You know, we have these laws that say that we were trying to protect the the woman from, from uh, you know, the, she's the victim. We're trying to protect the victim uh, from the uh, from the accused. But in Iran, you know, like like a lot of Muslim countries, it's just, I don't know. Is it still still the case there? You know, if if a woman comes forward and says she's been raped, she risks her own life.
But hey, you know, I guess it's I guess it's okay for Ahmadinejad to uh, to write to Trump and and, and and excoriate him on certain things. Your excellently, uh, your excellency, he says, has truthfully described the U.S. political system and electoral structure as corrupt and anti-public. So says Mahmoud. But much of the letter he has spent exhorting Trump to end interventions in the Middle East and to ditch the arrogance of past U.S. administrations. Oh, there, there it is again. You know, we're, we're the bad guy. You know, Iran is out there, you know, supporting terrorism of all kinds, but the United States is the bad guy. Isn't that, way how, isn't that how it usually works? Yeah, that's the way it always works. Um, you know, kind of like liberals. Liberals blame Republicans for everything that liberals have done. Yeah. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis' book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. And of course the Iranians didn't stop there with uh, Mahmoud. Uh, you know, they, they uh, Ahmadinejad didn't stop there. Went on. There's another story. Gateway pundit. Iranian Revolutionary Guard commander admits to having terror cells situated and ready to strike within the USA. Oh, but we're not supposed to stop Iranians from coming here because that was just, that's just bigoted and racist, right? Um, this guy who is a, um, a a commander, uh, and he's a, he's a Islamic Republic guard strategist, Hassan Abbasi, A-B-B-A-S-S-I. How do you spell Mississippi? M-I-S-S-P-P or S-S and P-P and, you know, with one eye, remember that? Or, or that's, you know, you spell it with one eye literally, or you put one hand over one of your eyes, and you spell it. Um, that's Hassan Abbasi. 
couple B's, couple S's there, a couple of A's. Um, so he's discussing the destructive potential of Iran's hidden army already within the U.S. of A. Abbasi says, I'll be brief. We have two million Iranians there. Two million Iranians. Be certain that I will raise a guerrilla army from amongst them against you. You know this well. Look how vulnerable you were on 9-11 when four Arabs who don't know how to fight managed to endanger your foundation. And he was talking about um, four of the Arabs that were that we know were Arabs uh, uh, that were the terrorists on these uh, flying these planes. That's who he's talking. About. Four, yeah, they don't. Know, hey, they do not know how to fly. They they cannot fight, but they can fly a plane into your buildings. And uh, President Trump wanted a temporary ban on refugees from Iran, and the Democrats, of course stop the president but knowing this i i I guess you know it's one of those things it's already too late if you got two million of them here it's it's it is illogical to say that they're all all two million of those people are benign well it's such a small percentage well two million even one percent gives you two or is that 200 but in any case it's still it's two or Two or two hundred too many. Only takes one to do some major damage. But hey, I guess we're not supposed we're not we're supposed to let these people just come in and hit us anytime we want. And when they do hit us, and they want to blame Republicans for it, you know, they're still blaming Republicans for for the uh, uh, Pearl Night Florida uh, Pearl nightclub shooting. It's still because we allowed, (laughs) it's because we won't ban assault rifles. Wait, 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 wait. So the the fact that this guy walks in into a nightclub and starts shooting the place up is because is the fault of Republicans because we won't ban the assault, the the so-called phony assault rifle. So I guess when the Sarnayev brothers used rice cookers and pressure cookers to make bombs, it was the rice and pressure cooker manufacturer's fault. They didn't use a gun. Would it have been better if this guy at the Pearl nightclub uh, went ahead and used a bomb instead? Ensuring more than 49 would have been killed. No, they focus on Republicans allowing for so-called assault rifles and not on the fact that you have people, not just the Iranians, you have ISIS who said, who said the same thing. We've got sleeper agents in, in your country already. All we got to do is activate them. And yet, for whatever reason, when we try to weed these people out or keep them from getting in, then the left stands up and says, bigot, racist. Islamophobe, homophobe, everything a phobe. And these people keep telling us, yeah, yes, we have these people into you, in, in your country right now waiting for orders. They are waiting for the orders to attack. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't see a problem with wanting to vet people more often, especially when you get people, leaders and, and strategists in these other countries that don't like us telling us, well, we've already got people in your country that can do you harm, and they're gonna, eventually. Yeah, anyway, folks, we're just getting started for the week, but we are done for today. We'll be back in about 21 hours. Same bat time tomorrow, same bat channel, of course. Check out the, the updated version of the RodEckles.net website. Until then, have a wonderful Monday. See you tomorrow. I've got some special news tomorrow, too. I'm Rod Eccles. Have a wonderful day. I'm out. Feels good to be clean. 
Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. A shameless politician always plays her cards right. Got a crew for the fight on the airwaves. Left dogs in the press keep the mouths tight. Cause the Clinton never needs to explain what. Why it is what they done or with who. A real Clinton knows that they're entitled. And you don't get to know what they do. What, what difference does it make? For Clinton, what's loaded in some fat apple file? A Clinton plays the victim for promotion. A Clinton kills it off with a smile. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. A server full of secrets ain't no thing. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. Nothing ever hits with the sting. <laughs> 